You know, I spent 24 years working the, the Golden State Killer case. And I did that from a forensic perspective. I did it from an investigative perspective. And I rode the roller coaster of the highs and lows of trying to solve that case using every available method. And then this investigative genealogy tool became available. I was then contacted by uh, Paul Holes, who was at the time with the district attorney's office in uh, Contra Costa County in California. And uh, so Paul then called me and asked me, well, you know, you were able to identify who, who Lisa was. Could you help me with one of my cold cases and identify a suspect? And so I then talked about, you know, how we'd done that. The case turned out to be that of the Golden State Killer. And uh, working with Paul and uh, four other people, we were actually were able then to come up with a suspect for the Golden State Killer. And within a matter of a few months, the case was solved and Joseph D'Angelo was identified. And for me, of course, it was satisfying because after 24 years, I had that answer. But I had developed relationships with the living victims as well as victims' loved ones of people who had been killed by this guy. And they needed that answer. And so they were so gracious in expressing uh, how much it meant for them to finally know who was responsible. For the Golden State Killer, um, the closest match we had was somebody who was probably a third or a fourth cousin. So we're talking about common ancestors who were great, 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 great grandparents. <laughs> so we're, we're a long way back. Uh, but there were, you know, there were five of us working on this. And so basically we were working around the clock for a little bit over two months to try and figure out who this person was. In utilizing investigative genealogy, uh, obviously it's, it's proven itself to be a revolutionary tool. We've seen over 70 cold cases being solved utilizing this tool in which probably would not have been solved. Uh, I think that the biggest concern is, is the perception that the public has about, well, what is it? What kind of violation of privacy is there? And, you know, part of what uh, the board I'm with, this Institute for DNA Justice, is try to educate the public as to what exactly this tool is. At no point, I as a law enforcement officer, did I have access to anybody's genetic information. All I got was information about how closely or distantly related these people were in the, the database that gave me starting data points to start doing just traditional genealogy to ultimately find Joseph D'Angelo. But I think that is going to be the big hurdle moving forward. And that's in part what we're here today to do is to educate Kansas authorities and eventually educate the public and legislators about what investigative genealogy is and what it's not.